is one last surprise. Out. <gasps> what is it? <laughs> Who's this from? <laughs> from Christine. Yeah. I know I've been waiting for myself to my whole life. It's not the best way to start off a conversation when we haven't seen each other and had a talk. Okay, a long I time. need you to chill out, first of all. Don't talk to me like that. Welcome back to my channel. This is Sami Sampi. Today we're going to review episode 3 of Selling Sunset. So it starts with the new boss in town. Mary is just enjoying a new status in the office. We see her sitting down in Jason's space in his absence. And then we have Miss Amenza coming in. And Miss Amenza is congratulating her again and they get to talk. Menza asks her how did Romain, her husband, felt about the promotion. And Mary said that Romain is really happy about the promotion that she was given, but her fear is that they've both been so busy that now they're going to spend even less time together. So she's a little bit worried about that, and she hopes that they're going to be able to better navigate the relationship. She, Mary then proceeds to ask about Heather's bridal shower. Amenza said that she needs to give her a gift. She, she needs to do the same. Then Mary asked her if she knows if Christine has been invited to the bridal shower. And Amenza does not know. She did meet with Christine the other day and she proceeded to tell her what was said. She felt that Christine felt attacked by the other ladies. And a lot of things were said that were not very nice. She said that Davina is not being genuine, that she's just trying to be liked. And Mary feels that Davina has been doing great. She feels that it would have taken more time, but Davina has really been improving with her attitude and getting along with the other ladies, while Christine is at the end of the tunnel. So as far as she is concerned, she's very happy with Davina. They continue talking and Amenza notices that Christine made a lot of unnecessary jabs and that she understands why the other ladies are not happy with Christine. Next scene, we have Christine with her baby and she's joining Chelsea with her baby. So they're having a mommy's date at the beach and the babies are looking beautiful. Both mamas are looking beautiful too. The setting is everything. They did a very good job with the setting for that scene. And they catch up. Christine tells Chelsea that she's back at the office and her being back at the office was very awkward. She says that the ladies were not very nice to her. They barely said hi to her. And then they talked about Edda's bridal shower, which she has not been invited to. So Chelsea is asking, what happened with Edda? Why aren't you invited to the bridal shower? And Christine proceeds to tell her that she may have said to the paparazzi that Edda and her fiancé liked to call the paparazzi on them. And I'm in, but that is not a big deal. I'm not, Christine, now you're not going to do that now. If someone makes the same accusation to you, you would not be happy. So don't downplay what you did. It really hurt Edda's feelings that touched that you were a friend. And they continue talking and Christine tells her a relationship with each of the ladies. She tells her that Davina, she just wants to be liked and that because she wants to be liked, being friends with Christine will not make her liked by the other ladies. And Chelsea tells her, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Those ladies are not really your friend. You should be wary of people talking shit about you to your friends and your friends don't do anything. Like if someone does that, if someone feels very comfortable to talk about you to your friend, that means that person is not your friend and you should be able to notice that, Christine. And a part of me is like, Christine knows. Christine knows that all those ladies talk a lot. And that's the problem with this show. All those ladies talk a lot. Like the reason, the, half of the drama from the show is because there's no secret. If Christine says something to someone, that someone is going to go tell someone else in a group. Like, it's no secret in the group. They all talk about everything, and they make it feel like it's normal. But I do agree with Chelsea that in that instances, 
people shouldn't feel comfortable to say things about someone that they call your friend. If they feel very comfortable doing it, it's because they know that you do not have a genuine friendship with that person. What do I think about the Davina situation? I understand Davina because she wants to be able to make money and working at the Open Arm Group is a luxury. It's nice, you know, she probably gets a lot of listing and a lot of advantage working there and she doesn't want to be looked as, you know, the person that is bringing drama into the office. And at the end of the day, they all have, they all have to eat, you know, and for me, if I was in Davina's shoes, I would just not talk about Christine with other ladies. I feel like if you don't do that, there's a, you wouldn't be aware of what is being said, but you can still be cordial with the ladies and be in a situation where you can maintain a good career. Let me all know what you think in the comment, guys. Christine is loving so much what Chelsea is saying that she decided that Chelsea has to be coming into the open line group and she's going to make it happen and she has a plan. She has a house that she would like to sell and she would like for Chelsea to help her sell the house and find a buyer for the house. She believes that if Chelsea is able to bring a, buy a buyer for the house, Jason is going to be highly interested in giving her a space, a, a job with the open line group. So Chelsea is all in. Next scene, we have Miss Emma. Emma is grinding as usual, and this time around, she's visiting a new construction home. The house is not finished yet. You know, they're still working on it, and she's meeting with the developer. His name is Micah, and Micah is really attractive. So they say hi to each other. Micah is showing her around. He's giving her the start of the house. He's giving her a little bit of history. On the house he's telling her that when he bought the house i think somewhere in 2016 it was a less than 2000 square footage but now the new house that they're building is over 10,000 square foot and from what i'm saying it's going to be really really nice so he's showing her around and they're talking they're vibing and emma is even flirting with him they're both flirting with each other she's really under his spell. Whenever they're visiting the pool, she's telling him that she's gonna be ready to like jump in the pool. She was a swimmer before and even qualified for the Olympics. And I was like, look at you, girl. And yeah, so they're talking, telling her that he's going to, oh, he's in the process of opening a bar that's like specified in like mescal. I'm like, what is mescal? If anybody know what mescal is, please leave it, <laughs> leave me a comment and educate us on this. And she's saying, oh, yeah, that would be great. And, you know, we can have our, my empanadas. And basically, for those of you that don't know, Emma has an empana a vegan empanadas business that is booming. So she's basically saying that that would be great to have that. So he's inviting her for the event. And she's excited because that's kind of like a date, you know. And then they get to talk a little bit more. And they realize that they have a lot of in common. They're both very family oriented. Micah said that he has like several siblings, I think he mentioned eight, and he even has a house here in LA for his family to come and visit him. And Emma is like, oh my God, I'm exactly the same. So they have a lot in common. And Emma is saying that usually she doesn't like to mix business with pleasure, but there's something about Micah and she just cannot, you know, stop herself from flirting with him. So yeah, I'm excited for Emma. Micah is a developer. He definitely has millions in the bank. He has business in the bank. He's handsome. He's muscular. His face is nice. I mean, sounds like the perfect catch to me. So let's see where that goes. Next scene, we have Chrishell. Chrishell is putting together the house that Brett asked her to help him sell the $10 million house, or I think the Maple House. And then we have Brett coming in and he's really impressed. He's saying that they did a very good job with staging and they have like that huge table that can seat 12 people at once. I mean, the house is definitely beautiful. It's kind of modern, but it has a touch of like modern farmhouse a little bit. It's cute, it's really cute and they're talking about it and so they're talking prices so initially brett wanted the house to be sold for 10 million 
And Chrishell is telling him that she thinks that if they lease the house for a little bit less than $10 million, maybe at 9.9 something, she would have more opportunities for buyers that can then come and basically bet on the house and hopefully get a house for a higher price. But Brett feels like now that he's seen the house being so beautiful stage and everything, $10 million is not enough. He wants to price the house at $10.6 million because of many reasons. He's explaining that the house is in a great location, has over $2 million in renovation, and the market just allows it. So why not? Not Why, why not price it at $10.6 million? And Chrishell is not sure. She explains that she's never sold a house over $10 million. And I mean, it's a big deal. The commission on it only is like $539,000. That is like huge. That is like more than like some people five year worth of their yearly salary. So it's definitely a big deal. But she's afraid. She's afraid because it's her first time doing it. And she is a, a fear is that by pricing the house too high, they end up not getting a, a buyer. But Brett is very confident and he's telling her it needs to be priced at 10.6, but she's like standing her ground and she's saying, you know what, let's have a bet. There's that little doggy passage and if I'm able to pass through it, we're going to lease the house at 10.495. And he's like, okay, if you win the bet, we're going to put it at 10.495. So Chrishell proceeds to explain to us that she is very exper experimented in doing that because whenever she would forget a key, she would always go through it. So I, that place looked so small. I didn't think that Krisha was able to do it, but she actually was able to do it. And I'm like, nah, those people are so fun. Look at the bed they're doing. So she's able to do it. Brett is shocked. He's like, man, I'm never gonna forget about it. But guess what? I feel like I would give make us a disadvantage by selling the house at 10.4995 just because you're afraid. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to leave the house at 10.6 and if you're able to sell it, you're going to get a bigger commission. And then Christian is like, yeah, that would be great. I'm okay, I'm open to get a bigger commission. And I'm like, girl, I wouldn't even have gone back and forth with my boss like this. If my boss feels like is okay with 10.6 i'll leave it at 10.6 you know what i mean i feel like you should have asked for a bigger commission from the beginning instead of going through all this back and forth but oh well they finally come to an agreement next scene we have christine and chelsea or the cnc or cc or freak and frack i feel like we need to give them a name because they are definitely a dynamic duo they're visiting the house where christine wants to have a broker's open where basically basically she's going to have a several real estate agent come and visit the house and see if they can all collaborate in finding a buyer the house is huge and it's listed for 17 million dollars so they're both meeting with the real estate agent on the house and they talk about it and they visit the house and they set up a plan together and they decided that they need to throw a nice party and invite the lady and use that opportunity to introduce Chelsea to the ladies. They're saying that because of how beautiful the house is and all the nice specs that the, nice, the house have, the party needs to be a luxury situation. They're thinking caviar and couture and the dress code has to be in accordance. Chelsea is asking Christine if the ladies are going to be able to follow the dress code. And Christine is like, you know, some of those bitches like to wear TJ Maxx of the right clothes and I'm like Christine you're so nasty girl keep on talking and they're talking about who they think is going to be there Christine mentioned Davina she mentioned Maya mentioned a couple names and they're like okay so it seems like a plan is in action so that Chelsea can finally get to meet Mary and the other ladies Christine then says to Chelsea that Edda unfollowed her on Instagram and you can see that she's heard about it but she says that she's okay with it because she was tired of seeing like protein bar advertisement on Heather's page and I'm like Christine stop doing that stop making all those snide comments like that's what people don't like about you and then she says that you know when Heather had a very difficult breakup 
she was there for Ada. She took care of her and everything. And honestly, she does not understand why Ada did not invite her to a bridal shower. Like whenever you do a bridal shower, you invite your friend from school and everything and people that were really there for her. So she doesn't understand why she was not invited. She says that Ada was invited at a wedding and was even there the, the, the day she chose a dress. That's how close they are. And she's heard about it. And Chelsea, you know, she's just listening to her. You know, there's nothing much that she can say. The whole situation is sad, but it is what it is. Next scene, it is Heather's bridal shower. And that bridal shower is beautiful. Like, I, if I could have a bridal shower, this is definitely what I would envision for me. Uh, Heather is looking good. All the ladies minus Christine are there. And they're just, you know, chit-chatting and everybody is happy for Edda. She comes and she thanks everybody and she's doing her hostess duty. Then she comes and visits and talks to the girl and they catch up. The girls catch her up on Mary's promotion. They tell her that Christine came back to the office and it was a very awkward situation. And Edda is like, oh my God, all of this happened when I wasn't there. And they're like, yeah. And then Amenza is talking about she met with Christine and Christine made a lot of snide comment a little bit about everybody. And she said that Davina is only trying to be like and she's not being genuine. Davina was hurt. Davina was like, that's not true. Do y'all think that's really how I am? The, the ladies were like, they didn't say yes right away. Like, they were like, yeah, you're just being real. I just see a big improvement in you. You know, I feel like you're just being real. You're trying to like get along with people and I like it. And that's what Mary tells Davina. Davina feels good about it, but the truth of the matter is that you have not been nice to them for a long time and they understand that you're just trying to maintain your position at the firm. So they know that it might, you, you might not be genuine. I talked to Chrishell and she asked her about the TMZ comment that Miss Christine made and how is that going to be because that's a comment that she made about her boss and Chrishell said that if she continues like that, she doesn't think that Christine is going to be part of the open line group for long if she continue on the direction that she is in. And Miss Edda, she's opening a gift and her mother-in-law and sister-in-law are making some speeches and it's very emotional and it's very nice. And then someone comes and tell her that there's something for her at the entrance and she's like, oh, what is it? And then they all go in the front and we see that massive, obstructive, obnoxious, Carts with red flower is taking all the space and then she's being given a card and it's Christine and Christine is telling her some stuff in there like some sweet little message and Edda just doesn't know how to take it. She's not had a relationship with Christine in a long time. Some of the ladies is right through the BS. Like Amenza is like, no, she's just trying to make her presence known. She was not invited. She sent this to make it, to make her presence known, to know that, you know, I was invited, but I'm still here. And that in her opinion, Christine was just being manipulative and is just trying to get a moment because at the end of the day, Christine loves attention. So then they all go to the restroom. Heather doesn't just understand why she did that because at the end of the day, they haven't had a relationship. And some of the ladies are not happy about it. It's just in uproar. And I feel like, well done, Christine. You wanted people to talk about you. Well, people are talking about you. You know, people are definitely talking. And I know that was what you wanted to do. You wanted to get some attention during a bridal shower. And honestly, it works. So congrats on that. <laughs> Next scene. We see Miss Edda, she's sitting down and she's looking a little bit like tired of waiting. She's on her phone and then we see Christine coming in. So they are going to meet and she finally agreed to talk to Christine. But when Christine comes, Christine is late. So she's telling her, hey, you're late. I've been waiting for you. And Christine, instead of apologizing, is like, well, I've been waiting for myself for a long time. And at the end with the shit, she's telling her straightforward, you're not going to do that. You're not going to say that. Like, I've been waiting for you for 45 minutes. And then Christine is like, you need to chill. And she's like, don't tell me to chill because you've been late. And I'm like, ooh, this going to be good. 
And that's it for episode three, y'all. Let me know what you think in the comment. What do you think of Christine and a snide remark? What do you think of Christine and Chelsea relationship? Personally, I really like it. I think that Chelsea is a breath of fresh hair for the show. If you're new here, welcome. And I invite you to, you know, subscribe. And if you're not new here and you've been supporting me, thank you for your support. I am very thankful. On this note, I will see you all tomorrow for episode 4 review. Bye.